This is Bruce and Studs and welcome on in back to the channel in this painting tutorial. So just to answer a few questions with regards to this Emperor's Champion slash Converted Blade Guard veteran, I decided to actually do this conversion mainly because, well, I'm not a Black Templars player and this model is absolutely incredible in my opinion. So I knew that I had to get my hands on it and I was trying to figure out exactly how I was going to able to fit this particular model into my army so i was like you know what this guy looks completely like a blade guard veteran so i decided to convert the emperor's champions into that so in order to convert the emperor's champion into a blade guard veteran the first thing that i had to do was to basically shave off the iconography on the right pauldron that is wielding the sword and that took a little bit of time, but I was pretty successful in doing it. The thing that was really a pain in the ass for me was actually to convert the arm that holds the storm shield from a Primaris one down to a firstborn space marine. So what I had to do was shave off a lot of the shoulder area on the blade guard veteran bit to make that pauldron fit. Ha! <laughs> that rhymed. Anyways. That's what I had to do, and that's what took the most time when I was doing this conversion. I know the colors that I chose for this painting tutorial is non-standard when it comes to, obviously, a Black Templar Emperor's Champion. But like I said, I wanted this model to fit into my Primaris army, so that's exactly what I did. So I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial, and let's jump right on in. Alright, we are first going to be starting the model off with a base coat of Retributor armor. And what I would actually recommend you to do is buy the spray can of Retributor armor if that's the base coat that you want to start off with. I didn't figure out that I wanted to paint this model gold until afterwards, so here it's completely base coated. And next, we are going to be using a pin wash of Reichland Flesh Shade. And the reason why I like the, using the pin washing technique is mainly because, well, it prevents the whole model from becoming too dark, and all I want is to basically shade those recesses, and that's exactly what I'm doing. And what you're seeing now is the effects afterwards when it was pin washed. Next, we are going to be painting the cloth areas with Phoenician purple. Now, I think that this area can be painted a bunch of different colors. I think red would look really good, green would look pretty fine too, and in fact, blue, because gold, I think, matches with a lot of different colors. And the Phoenician purple actually goes on kind of roughly because I had to put at least three coats on. And now all the cloth parts have been painted with Phoenician purple and it looks nice and rich. Next we are going to be moving to painting all the pouches and belt areas with Morn Fang Brown. I really like the warm tones of this brown color because it really matches the warm tones of the gold. So that's exactly why I chose it. Some people may use Dryad Bark which is a very dark cool type of tone. But in terms of this kind of model and this kind of base, that's what I wanted to do. So all the accessories are now pretty much base coated. And now we're going to be painting the bottom of the sword as well as the buckle areas with lead belcher. And that's pretty much standard for every single one of the silver pieces that I paint on one of my models. Next thing that you're going to be doing is to be painting the top of this sword with Stormhost Silver. And don't worry about the blockiness of this because we're going to be wet blending these two colors Moving on, we're next going to be painting the wreath portions with a nice green color, which is Warpstone Glow. And I really like the effects of how this looks. That's why I said even for the cloth areas, it, green would look very, very nice on this model. It just looks like it really belongs with that color. So make sure to highlight all the wreath areas, especially on the top of the crown. And now we are starting to pick up a little bit more of a differentiation because we're starting to pick out all the different areas. Next is coloring the purity seal with the screamer pink. And then following that, we're going to be painting the sword areas with hashnut copper to bring the sword to life and to make it stand out from the rest of the model. And next we're going to be using Ushapti bone for the purity seal ribbon to make that stand out from the rest of the model as well. Next, we are going to be painting this area beneath the power armor with Abaddon Black. Typically, what I would do is to actually just wash that area with Reichland Flesh Shade, but since this is such a special model, in my opinion, I decided to actually give it more oomph and paint those areas with Abaddon Black to give more differentiation in color, just because this is like a special character. And this is exactly how we're doing right now with the current progress. It's starting to look good. Next, we are shading the Purity Seal with Reichland Flesh Shade. 
so we can get some more differentiation on the ribbon. Next, we are going to be shading the recesses of the purity seal with carp or crimson, and this works really well to bring it to life. And finally, we're going to be shading the warp stone glow painted parts with beel tan green to give the recesses of the wreath areas some nice depth of flavor. What you also want to do is make sure it doesn't pool too much because if it does pool, it kind of like ruins the whole entire wreath area. So next we're going to be shading the buckles and other areas painted with lead belcher with, you know what, the standard Nuln oil. And this actually brings all those silver pieces to life, gives it a little bit more depth and gives it a lot more, well, just definition. Next, we're going to be shading those areas painted with hashnut copper with Agrax Earthshade, again, to have more depth. Next is to paint the handle with Flesh Terrors Red, which is the first contrast paint that we're using on this model. And next, we're going to be shading the cloth with Druki Violet. And because this area is in the centerpiece of the model, you want to try to make sure to make this thing look really good and not have these things pull into areas in which it's not supposed to pull into. Next, we're going to be wet blending the sword with lead belcher and stormhole silver. I'm not going to exactly go into the technique on how to do it, as there are a ton of tutorials on the YouTubes that tells you how to do it properly. However, I will say that this should be a technique that every advanced painter should master because it really looks good blending everything together and makes all the things look smooth and flowing together. So next is painting the lenses with Memphiston Red. I actually gemmed this particular portion of the model, but I decided not to show it on video because it didn't actually come out that great. But again, there are other tutorials on the YouTubes that will show you exactly how to gem properly. So now, as you can see, we are highlighting the purity seal on the highest points with Memphiston Red. And keep in mind that we are only using the side of the brush to do the highlighting by using the edge of the brush, it really allows you to get those clean lines like I'm doing right now with the Cyberite Green painting the wreath as you can see right there. The lines are really crisp, they're really standing out, and obviously they're only highlighted to the points that are the highest on the wreath. So you would do this for the wreath on the pauldron if that's what you choose, and then on the wreath on the top. So next we're going to be highlighting the belt area with Scrag Brown. Again, it, this is a very warm color that matches the Mornfang Brown, and it does make this model pop out quite a lot. So next we're going to be highlighting the parts of the chain, the buckles, as well as the sword with Stormhost Silver. This is a very nice color to make the dull color that you painted with Nuln Oil to really pop out. And again, I'm using the brush edge to pick out those highlights and as you can see, the lines are really crisp, and this is what I recommend you to do. So next, we're going to be highlighting the highest points on the armor with Stormhole Silver. As you look at a very bright area on a metallic model, you will see that the light reflection actually comes out reflecting as silver. So that's exactly why I chose that. So next, we're going to be painting the other parts of the armor with Retributor Armor and going through the same effect of painting the pouches with Mornfang Brown, as you can see over there. This particular model does have like a kind of a light lantern torch or something, so I didn't actually put that in there or how I painted it. So what I did was hit that area with lead belcher, then painted the lantern areas with a Stormhill Silver, and finally I went and used Cassandora Yellow to paint those areas that I painted with Stormhill Silver. Now we're moving on to the Storm Shield, and what I decided to do was paint the skull area with a lead belcher as usual, and then you'll need to highlight all those different skulls there. I think there's probably at least like five or six of them. And moving on, there are some raised areas on the Storm Shield, and we're going to be painting those areas with Hashnut Copper. I think any sort of like copperish bronze kind of tone would look very good on this particular area of the Storm Shield. And as you can see, I'm picking up all those higher areas with Hashnut Copper. Now moving on, we're going to be shading the halo with Nuln Oil, as well as the different runes that are on the Power Sword. Next is highlighting the halo with the Stormhose Silver, and also highlighting the various areas on the sword with Stormhose Silver too that I may or may not have missed. So as you can see, the model is really starting to come together really nicely, and it is starting to look almost complete. Next, we're going to be shading the skulls with Nuln Oil as usual, and painting the area on the shield with Ushapti Bone. Now, I decided to use Ushapti Bone for this area. You could probably use, like, I don't know, 
maybe like another silver color. It just depends on what you feel like using. But regardless, I think Ushapti Bone looks really good as a contrast with all the different colors that are on the Storm Shield. Next, we're going to be picking up the highlighted areas with Storm Host Silver. And there is actually a purity seal on this Storm Shield. So we're going to be using the usual Screamer Pink and then moving on to using Warpstone Glow for the ribbon. I decided obviously not to use Ushapti Bone for this area because, well, it would look really weird to have that Purity Seal ribbon match the whole entire look of the Storm Shield. The next thing that we're going to do is shade all the areas with Agrax Earthshade that was covered by the Hashnut Copper, the Carlboro Crimson for the areas with Screamer Pink, and finally the ribbon area with Bealtan Green. And next we're going to highlight these areas with Cyberite Green as well as Carbor Crimson as we have been doing for the rest of the model so everything looks like a one cohesive unit. So just to explain what I did with the rest of the Storm Shield on the edges where it's still roughly black I actually used Hashnut Copper to paint those areas and if you flip the Storm Shield around you'll start seeing these electric nodes. So the electric nodes I painted a lead belcher and on the top of the electric node I did Storm Host Silver and then covered those areas with a Talisar Blue. And finally, that's the finished shield. And what I actually did was to use a black templar in between the Ushapti bone parts and the Hashnut copper areas to give more definition between the shield area. So now we are going to be painting the rock with Administratum Gray. I really like using this gray color for rocks mainly because it is light enough so that when we cover this thing up with Basilicum Gray, you can actually use the Administratum Gray after this contrast media has dried up to highlight the model again so you don't have to use a different color it just looks like it's a complete different color on the model when you're done with it and now pretty much we are approaching the end of the model we're next going to be painting the base with rhinox hide and i would recommend you to paint this base with the main color that you actually chose to use for the rest of your army so it can look like a cohesive unit but hey if you want this to be a special piece and to make it standalone you could paint this any color that you want so pretty much after this we are done and now you are looking at the finished model right now. And I apologize that one thing I actually forgot to mention was how I actually highlighted the cloth. What I used to highlight the cloth was use a Gene Stealer Purple. And for the highest points on the model, I used the Child of Lilac. So this is Bruising Studs, and I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial. And I'll see you all in the next one.